So yes guys, let's start with the next topic that is disposal of subsidiaries under consolidation. First of all, let's understand whenever I say it's a subsidiary of an enterprise, that means my voting power in this company is more than 50%. On disposal of subsidiary, I can have a partial disposal or a full disposal. A complete disposal of the subsidiary in the sense basically the entire shares in the subsidiary are sold out. Whenever you have a complete disposal of a subsidiary, you do not have any further consolidation. So in the year in which the disposal happens, we just need to identify profit or loss on disposal. And no further consolidation. But whenever we come to partial disposal, a partial disposal can give you three things. After the partial disposal, still the holding company holds more than 50% voting bar. Can this happen? Yes. Let's say someone has 80% shares in a particular company. He sold 20% of it. He still holds 60%, which is still more than 50% of a voting bar. And I'm still calling him as subsidiary. And I'll still consolidate as per AS21. But whenever I have a disposal where my voting power has come to 20 to 50 percent, wherever my voting power has been reduced to 20 to 50 percent, this is not called as a subsidiary anymore. Because subsidiary you need to have controlling interest. Here you don't have controlling interest. This is called a substantial interest. Whenever you have substantial interest, we call it as associate. Even in the case of associate, we do consolidate. But the standard now changes to AS23. Let's say for suppose this is reduced less than 20%. In this case, we'll just call it as an investment. It is accounted as per AS13. The normal investment standards, there is no consolidation required anymore now. So these are the three situations. Two consolidations still exist. If it has still more than 50% voting bar or 20 to 50% voting bar, whenever it still has more than 50%, we said consolidate as per AS21, method called as full consolidation. And whenever we are using AS23, we use something called as equity method of consolidation. This is a basic framework for the disposal. You completely dispose of a subsidiary. You don't have to consolidate any further. So in the balance sheet date on which, in the year in which you have actually disposed a subsidiary, you can stop the consolidation process, find out the profit or loss on disposal, transfer it to your reserves. And whenever there is a partial disposal, there can be three situations where you are still holding more than 50%, 20 to 50% or less than 20%. If you are still holding more than 50%, you still have controlling interest called as a subsidiary, consolidation will continue as per AS21. But if the disposal of a subsidiary has reduced your voting power from between 20 to 50, even if it is greater than or equal to 20, that is sufficient. 
But whenever you talk about controlling interest, it should be compulsorily greater than 50, not equal to 50. Here, greater than equal to 50, sorry, greater than equal to 20 or equal to 50. Between this, then I'll call it as an associate. We call this interest as not controlling interest. It is called a substantial interest. That substantial interest we start consolidating as per age 23 using equity method. This we have already seen full consolidation. What we have to see is the equity method of consolidation. However, if your voting bar has been reduced to less than 20%, then there is no consolidation required. We account that investment as per AS13. So, this is it for your disposal of subsidiaries. Yes guys, so let's start reading problem number 29 for the disposal of subsidiary a simple problem to start with. Following is a summarized balance sheet of A Limited and its subsidiary B Limited. Prepare a consolidated balance sheet as on 31st December 2011. So there is some neatly drafted balance sheet which is given there. In the balance sheet, check the investments. 1200 shares in B Limited are purchased at 15 rupees by A Limited and on the liability side, I have a PL account which is bought forward and profit for the year, and above that, there is given something as profit on sale of shares. Read the adjustments. A Limited bought in the earlier year 1600 equity shares in B Limited at 15 rupees when the PL of B was 4400. A sold 400 shares at 22.5 rupees each, credited the difference between the sale proceeds and the cost. To profit on sale of investments on 30th June 2009, crediting the balance to the investment account. The profit during the year is accrued uniformly. 
Yes, guys. Now understand. When we are trying to understand this, what is the number of shares in B Limited? There are total 20,000 shares in B Limited. Each share of 10 rupees. So, net 2,000 shares. So, 20,000 equity share capital, 2,000 shares. Earlier, A held 1,600 shares. 1,600 shares out of 2,000 shares is 80 percent. Now, he disposed 400 shares. That is nothing but 20 percent. Out of 80, if he is disposing 20, I am still left out with 1,200 shares out of 2,000 shares. Still accounting to 60 percent, which is still a subsidiary now. I still hold controlling interest because 60 percent holding is still existing there. Then, I have to continue consolidation as per AS21. So, simple problem to start with guys. Let's start. Date of acquisition. This is not available. He just said in the previous year. A limited bought in the earlier year 1600 shares. What exact date? I have no idea. Let's go for the share holding pattern. Try to identify the share holding pattern on the balance sheet date. That is when we want to consolidate. Number of shares and percentage holding held by A Limited and minority. A Limited on the balance sheet date holds 1200 shares. Total number of shares in B Limited are 2800 held by minority. So this is 60 and 40. Still hold controlling interest. Do I need analysis? There is no adjustment if you observe. Yes, there is a profit on sale of disposal. But for which company? B limited. Not for the subsidiary. Subsidiary directly said 4400 is the balance of reserve on the date of his acquisition. So nothing else is relevant from that. I can directly go for distribution of reserves. Only one reserve that's a PL. What was the PL on the date of acquisition? 4400. What is the total PL in the balance sheet? PL in B limited column. BNL bought forward is 7200. Profit for the current year is 4800. Total is 12,000. Out of 12,000, if 4,400 is pre-acquisition, the balance 7,600 should be post-acquisition. Distributed between A limited and minority. Sixty percent and forty percent. Yeah, the following things. There's no dividend, guys. So the cost of control is simple.
Each share is purchased at 15 rupees, so 1200 shares. Total cost of acquisition is 18,000. There is no pre acquisition dividend to be deducted. Compare this with share and net assets. Share capital and pre acquisition reserves. Share capital, he holds 1200 shares, each share is 10 rupees. Share capital held is 12,000. Pre acquisition reserves 2640. 14,640 should result in a goodwill of 3,360. Should result in a goodwill of 3360. Continue for minority. There is no adjustment even to minority interest. Simple calculations. Share and share capital, he holds 800 shares, each share of 10 rupees, 8000 share capital. His share in the reserves, pre-acquisition as well as post-acquisition reserves. One seven six zero and 3040 His total is 12,800 Go for your reserves for CVS Only one reserve That is PNL Eliminated balance of PL, you need to check the balance sheet and fill up. Check the balance sheet. PL bought forward was 6,000. Profit during the current year was 2,000. The total profit to be bought forward is 8,000. Add is share in post acquisition reserves. Of B Limited. His share in post acquisition reserves of B Limited is 4560. There is a profit on sale of shares which is shown separately. You can add it to the PL. It's a partial disposal. Fifteen five sixty is your reserves for CBS. No dividend declared, nothing given. Straightforward problem. After that, you can go for the balance sheet. Consolidated balance sheet of A Limited. As on 31st December 2011. Equity and liabilities. Shareholders funds, shares 
share capital. A limited share capital is 1 lakh. Reserves and surplus. Only P&L. 15,560. Minority interest. 12,800. There is no non-current liabilities, there is no current liabilities, that is the end of the story on the liability side. On the assets, non-current assets, we have only sundry assets which I will place it under this. The total of sundry assets is 93 plus 32, 1,25,000 and along with that I have an intangible asset, that is nothing but the goodwill, 3,360. Yes guys, let's take the 13, sorry, 30, question number 30. H limited purchase on 1-4-2009, equity shares of 100 rupees each in S limited. When S limited had 10 lakhs as its share capital. So each share is 100 rupees, the total number of shares should be 10,000. Out of 10,000 holding company, H limited holds 8,000. So that is 80% holding on 1-4-2009. It sold 500 shares on 1-4-2010 and purchased 1000 shares on 1-4-2011. Estimated paid 15% dividend each year in September and there was no change in the share capital up to 31st March 2012. The P&L balance of S Limited and the investment in H Limited and S Limited on different dates are given as under. So they are giving you the P&L amounts and the investment of H limited in S limited balance. 1st April that was the start date and 3 balance sheet dates 31st December 2010, 2011 and 2012. The amounts shown in the investment represent cost price reduced by sales and increased by further purchases 
without making any adjustment for the PNL on sale or for dividends. So there is no adjustment for the profit or loss on sale or dividends. So if he has sold it for 20 rupees, he used to deduct 20 rupees. But actually what do we have to do? We need to identify the cost. We need to reduce the cost of sales and the difference between sale and cost of sale we have to transfer it to PNL saying it is profit on profit or loss on disposal which he hasn't done which we have to do now. Prepare a statement for showing relevant figures of goodwill or cost of control and revenue profits. That's it. So basically the first thing that we need to understand is come to the investment of H limited in S limited column. First initial acquisition when he purchased those 8000 shares he purchased it for 12,80,000. Subsequently if you observe on the first balance sheet date also it was 12,80 because the first disposal started on 1,4,2010. So that means in the next year it should dispose. Check how much it became on 31st March 2011 from 12,80 it came down to 11,90. Why did it come down to 12,90? It came down to 11,90 because it has sold 500 shares <coughs> as on 1-4-2010. So what he's saying is the amount what is redu reduced from this 12 lakh 80 to 11 lakh 90 is 90,000. That 90,000 is not a cost of investment sold. That is purely the value of sales. I've sold it for 90, I've reduced it by 90, which is wrong. So what do we have to do? We need to start finding out what is the proportionate cost. Find out how many shares did he sell? 500. How many shares did he purchase initially? 8,000. So on a comparative basis, find out what is the cost of the sales. If 8,000 shares cost 12 lakh 80,000, then how much will be the cost of 500 shares? 80,000. It is 80,000 costing shares, which he sold it for 90,000. So how much should be reduced from investment? 80. 10,000 should be transferred to profit on sale. So this 10,000 adjustment we have to do. Next. Again, he purchased 1000 shares on 1-4-2011. So on 31st March 2012, I will see the investment said 14 lakhs. So from 11 lakh 90, it became 14 lakhs. That means it increased by 3 lakh 10,000. The 3 lakh, sorry, 2 lakh 10,000. The 2 lakh 10,000 is nothing but the cost of purchase of those 1000 shares. Got it? So what we have to do now is, there is a lot of pre-acquisition dividends also which will come up now. We have to adjust whatever he has wrong, done wrong and the pre-acquisition dividend so that we can get what is the exact cost of investments. Check the pre-acquisition dividend part. In the third para above, above the table, the last para, S Limited paid 15% dividend every year in September and there was no change in the share capital up to 31st March. So every year he is paying in 15 September, sorry, in the month of September at the rate of 15%. That means... Up to the end of March, whatever is the financial year, I am paying the inter dividend in the month of September. Talk about the first investment. My first purchase of 1-4-2009, that means I was not the shareholder in the year 2008-9. But still, I will receive the dividend in the month of September at the rate of 15%. So whatever I received for this 8,000 shares should be completely considered as pre-acquisition dividend. Subsequently, Come to the 1000 shares purchased in 1-4-2011. Again in the month of September 2011, again I will get 15%. So to the extent of this 1000 shares, the dividend received will be called as pre-acquisition. Balance shares is post, but only for this 1000 shares, we have to consider it as pre-acquisition there. So let's start drafting the investment again. The investment of HNS, let's start redrafting the entire thing. Put down a heading. Investment in S limited account. Let's find out the appropriate value of investments guys. The profit is also not 10,000 anymore because we have pre-acquisition dividend which will be reduced from the cost. So the cost of the investment is not 12 lakh 80. 12 lakh 80 is come dividend value. We will get X dividend value when you deduct the pre-acquisition dividend from the investments. So let's start redrafting this.
investments in shares of S Limited. So date particulars and amount start first transaction one four two thousand nine eight thousand shares purchase for twelve lakh eighty one four zero nine eight to bank twelve lakh eighty thousand. In the month of September, I will get dividend. So, September 2009. I don't know the date. By bank, this is completely pre-acquisition dividend. Calculate. How many shares? 8,000 shares. Each share value is 100 rupees. And I get 15% dividend of this. 12,000 or 1,20,000? 120. So that should be the closing balance on 31st March 2010. Eleven lakh sixty. Now what happened in the next year on 1-4-2010 he sold 500 shares. So 1-4-2010 500 shares. 1410 by bank. He sold it for how much? 12 lakh 90 minus 11 lakh sorry 12 lakh 80 minus 11 lakh 90 he sold it for 90,000. But we need to identify profit or loss on sale. Profit or loss on sale, come on, identify the, first start with sale proceeds, identify profit or loss. My sale proceeds are 90,000. My cost of investment sold, compare, 11,60 is the total value. What is the value of 500 shares if 8,000 shares are worth 11,60,000? What is the cost of investment? If 8,000 shares are 11,60, 500 shares are? Profit of 17500 from this. I am not taking 12,80 guys. I am taking 11,60 because 1,20 was pre-acquisition dividend in that. Profit on sale for 2 P&L. 17,500. I will receive dividend even in September, but this year dividend, whatever I received will be called as post acquisition dividend. I don't have to take it into my investment column at all. So you can close it down 31st December 2011, sorry 31st March 2011. Balance carried down. Should be ten lakh eighty two thousand five hundred. Yeah, 
1500. Bring it down to next year, 142011. Balance brought down. 1087500 on the same day again he is purchasing shares to bank check he has purchased 1000 shares on 142011 check the increase in the value of investment as per whatever is given to you 1190 became 14 lakhs so what he has purchased the cost of purchase is 2 lakh 10000 on the shares which you purchase now those 1000 shares they will be entitled to receive dividend in the month of september 2011 guys i will receive dividend even on the opening shares as well but that dividend will be considered as post acquisition dividend so i am only considering pre acquisition dividend for this 1000 shares which are just purchased Thousand shares, hundred rupees each, fifteen percent dividend, fifteen thousand rupees. Close down the balance towards the end. Balance carried down. Thirty-first March two thousand twelve. Twelve lakh eighty two five hundred. That is the final balance. Yes, guys. So when we calculate your cost of control, we can directly take our cost of investments at the end of each year, adjust it for your pre-acquisition dividend as eleven lakh sixty, ten lakh eighty seven five hundred, and twelve lakh eighty two thousand five hundred. These figures are direct figures for your cost of control. You don't have to adjust for even pre-acquisition dividend because we have already done that. We have already adjusted for the pre-acquisition dividends. No further adjustments at all. Now read through. There is something which is given regarding the P&Ls now, which we need to analyze. That's how we get the cost of control. Check the cost of control. So the P&L of S Limited is five lakhs, six lakh twenty, seven lakhs, and eight lakhs. What he says is the amount shown in the yeah. Uh, he is saying that fifteen percent dividend is also paid. So guys, what is the total number of shares? Ten lakhs. So out of uh, share capital is total ten lakhs. If fifteen percent dividend is paid on ten lakhs, he'll be paying one lakh fifty thousand rupees as dividend every year. On one four two thousand nine, if the balance of the PNL is five lakhs, out of which again he has to pay three lakh fifty thousand rupees as dividend. So let's start solving. 
I have multiple dates of acquisition here. Date of acquisition. I have two dates of acquisition. One on 149. And the second one is 14-2011. He's asking our cost of control at the end of each year. Each year we'll calculate. So life, try to identify shareholding pattern for each year. Number of shares and percentage holding. Try to identify for each year guys. First year that is 9-10. At the end of 9-10 that is I am trying to calculate on 31st March 2010. Now H limited and minority. How much they hold. H holds 8,000 shares, minority hold 2,000 shares, total being 10,000 shares, split pass 80-20. But when it comes down to the next year on 31st March 2011, I sold 500 shares. That means my H limited number of shares have been reduced from 8,000 to 7,500. So what my minority holds is now 2500. Giving me a shareholding of 7525. Come to the last year then. 31st March 2012. Now, after I sold 1000 shares for 31st March 2012, again I purchased 1000 shares. So 7500 will now become 8500, minority holds 1500, total number of shares being 10,000. My shareholding pattern at the end of the year is 8515. Now let's try to understand the profits guys. Now in the first case when I want to calculate what is the pre-acquisition profits for the first acquisition on 31st March 2010. You can check. The profits on that date 1-4-2009 exactly before his acquisition was 5 lakhs. Out of which dividend is paid at the rate of 15% on its total share capital of 10 lakhs. That means he paid 1,50,000 as dividend. So this 5 lakhs should come down to 3,50,000. So that is your pre-acquisition results with respect to the first acquisition. Now let's try to analyze the results. Last date, my PNL balance as on thirty first March two thousand twelve. This balance was eight lakhs. Handle each year separately. I'll start with the balance as on. 1-4-2009 It was 5 lakhs Out of this 5 lakhs Then I have to first less I have to less this proposed dividend I 
how much? 1 lakh 50. There is no change in the share capital. So every year it should be 1 lakh 50 only. So my reserves towards the end are 3 lakh 50 at the beginning. Next. Next year my reserves went up to 6 lakh 20. This should be the profit of 2009-10. How much should be the profit of 2009-10? 3 lakh 50 it was. It went up to 6 lakh 20. So basically my profit is 2 lakh 70. From this year also again I have to give dividend. Give a deduction for proposed dividend even here. Now check how much is the total reserve. 3 lakh 50, 1 lakh 20. Total is 4 lakh 70. It went up to 31st March 2011, 7 lakhs. So 7 lakhs minus 4 lakh 70. What was the profit of next year? Profit of 2010-11, 7 lakhs minus 4 lakh 70 is 2 lakh 30. Eh? Three lakh fifty plus one lakh twenty, four lakh seventy, four lakh seventy minus seven lakhs, two lakh thirty. Again, dividend every year, dividend guys. Every year, same dividend one lakh fifty. Balance profit left out is 80,000. Now check what is the total reserve. What should be the last year's profit then? Check last year's profit then. 350, 120, 80. Total 550. 550 became 8 lakhs. So profit of 2011-12 is 2,50,000. Dividend has not been proposed so far. I will propose it now. Doesn't make any difference if you propose or if you even if you leave it there. Doesn't matter guys. Now this is the story of your profits. Take your 31st March 2010 or 31st March 2011 or 31st March 2012. Pre-acquisition is based on my date of acquisition. What was the date of acquisition? 1409. For this year, when I am calculating on 31st March 2010, my cost of control, the entire 8000 shares were purchased on 1409. So whatever reserve was existing on 1409, 350 is completely my pre-acquisition. Come to the next year. 75,000 shares. When did you buy this 7,500 shares? It is out of the original shares only. So even this 7,500 shares were existing on 1409. So what is pre-acquisition? 3,50 only. But this will change. Why? Because it has increased to 8,500. 8, out of this, I will split it into two parts. 7,500 shares were acquired on 1409 for which 3,50,000 is a pre-acquisition. But for this 1500 shares, sorry, for this 1000 shares which are purchased at a later point of time on 1-4-2011, the profits existing on 1-4-2011, that is 3 lakh 50 plus 1 lakh 20 plus 80,000, the entire amount will be called as pre-acquisition reserve for you. Got it? So, 
when we are trying to calculate your cost of control, we need to identify your pre-acquisition reserves very very carefully. So I will come to the cost of control now. As on 31st March 2010, 31st March 2011, 31st March 2012. Cost of investment, pick up from the investment. First, 31st March 2010, answer 11 lakh 60,000. Next year, 10 lakh 87,500. Last year, 12 lakh 82,500. Picked up direct values. Should I deduct pre acquisition dividend? Not required because I have already deducted the pre-acquisition dividends from the cost of investment. So I don't have to deduct again. I have already deducted 1,20,000 for respect of 8,000 shares. And again for the respect of 1,000 shares, again I deducted 15,000. It's already adjusted. Go only for your share in net assets. First thing is a share capital. Check your share holding pattern. Each share is 100 rupees and fill up. Each share is 100 rupees. Share capital. Come on guys, fill it up. Share holding pattern. How many shares? First, 8,000. This will become... 8 lakh. Next one. 7 lakh 50. Next one. 8 lakh 50. This is where you need to be very very careful. Till here everyone will do. Now this is pre-acquisition reserve. Yes, guys, come to 31st March 2010. I have 8,000 shares acquired on 1409. Reserve on 1409 is pre acquisition, 3,50. Out of which, what is your share? 80%. So, pre acquisition reserve can be written as 3,50,000 into 80%. There is nothing but 2,70,000. 2,80. My total figure is 10,80,000 compared with your cost of investment, I must be arriving at a goodwill. First year at 80,000. Continue. Next year. Year 2, 31st March 2011, 7,500 shares, date of acquisition. 1409 only. Whatever reduction is there, that is only during the current year. But original share 7500 purchased on 1409. So this 350 is pre acquisition. But out of which my share is only 75 now. This is 262,500. And my total share in net assets is 10,12,500. So obviously it should give me a goodwill now again for 60,000, 65,000, 75,000, 75,000. This is tricky. Last year is tricky because 8,500 is not one date of acquisition. 8,500 includes 7,500 shares which were acquired on 1409 plus 1,000 shares which were acquired on 14 2011. 
for the thousand shares. Thousand shares in the sense, what is the shareholding pattern for thousand shares? Total number of shares are ten thousand. So he acquired ten percent extra now. Now for the ten percent that he acquired on one four two thousand eleven, everything is pre acquisition. Three lakh fifty existing on one four zero nine. Profit for the year 910, 1 lakh 20, plus profit for the year 1011, 80,000. All these three results will be considered as pre acquisition for that 10%. But for the balance 75%, only 3 lakh 50, like we have just solved. So we have two parts. First part, 2 lakh 62,500 as it is. Why 2 lakh 62,500? Because it's the same figure 75% of 3 lakh 50. But additional 10% is there. We have to calculate that plus put up the 10%. 10% of how much? Calculate 350 plus 120 plus 80. What is the total pre acquisition reserve now? 50,000. Additional, so my total figure is 3 lakhs 17,500. Oh, sorry, plus 10 lakh 50 is there, no? 8 lakh 50. So it should be 11 lakh 67,500. Eleven lakh 67,500. Compare it with your 12 lakh 82,500. You will get up 1 lakh 15,000 rupees of goodwill. We get 1 lakh 15,000 rupees of goodwill. Yes guys, he's asking you revenue profits. What is revenue profits? Post acquisition profits. How much will you add it to your reserves for CBS? Careful, careful again. Three dates. 31st March 2010. 11 and 12. 
Observe. Standing on 31st March 2010, that is up to here, 3,50,000 is pre, and how much is post? Only 1,20,000 is post. Only 1,20,000 becomes post acquisition. So out of this post acquisition profits, my share in that year is 80%. So how much will you take in? Profit of 9.10 Profit of 10.11 And finally profit of 11.12 Come on Keep adding You get the results Standing on 31st March 2010 I don't, I don't need these two columns Now whatever is the profit on 2009.10 That is 1,20,000 what is my share on 31st March 2010? 80%. 96,000 is pre-acquisition. Nine ten is a post-acquisition reserve even in 10-11 as well. But my shareholding pattern will change. 1,20,000 into 75%. How much is this? I guess this is 90,000. Because second year, my holding is 75%. 3,50,000 anyways is pre-acquisition because it is a reserve existing on the date of acquisition. So the profit of 2009-10 is post acquisition. But standing on 31st March 2011, even 10-11 profit is post acquisition to the extent of 80,000. So 80,000 holding, 75% is 60,000. Nothing for the last year profits. As usual, again, 31st March 2012, we'll have two parts. 85% I'll split into 75 and 25, sorry, 75 and 10. When did you buy that 10%? 10% was purchased on 1-4-2011. That means somewhere here. So what is the post-acquisition profit for him? Only 1 lakh. So for the 75, though I'll consider this 1 lakh 20, 80 and 1 lakh, entire thing as post-acquisition, for the 1000 shares which you purchase, only the 1 lakh is the post acquisition. So, profit of 2009 10, 1 lakh 20,000 into 75% only. For that additional 10%, though your shareholding is 85, I won't take 85% because the 10%, 1 lakh 20 is still pre acquisition only. Amount is 90,000. What about the next year, 2010-11? Still I will take 75% only because it was acquired on 1-4-2009, sorry, 2011. This will still be 60. This will change now, last year. Last year profits of 1 lakh. But what I will consider as revenue profits will not be 75 anymore, will be 85 because for that additional 10%, even this 1 lakh rupee is a post acquisition reserve. So this will become 85,000. So my total revenue profits, calculate. Observe this percentage changes guys. For 2 years I have taken 75. For 1 year I have taken 85. Ninety-six. 1 lakh 50, 2 lakh 35. 